Oh hey, I like naming things based on what they inflict upon me. Who knows why no one likes talking to me? Uh, here, let me show you how, how I do it. Um, happiness. Uh, yeah, that's definitely P PTSD. Uh, home, always remember that. Um, brain damage. Actually, that was a bit harsh. Let me just reconsider that one. Um, anger issues. There are tons of video game genres, so much so that you might be interested in trying them all out. From your simple platformers and puzzle games to your hardcore shooters and whatnot, you always have a choice in picking an all-time favorite video game genre. And it's hard to pick just one. You can like water and day old water, but in the end, they're both water. And let's not forget the fact that some video game genres are actually combinations of two other genres. I've heard people call hot chocolate coffee. Who do you think said all that? Not me. But from your day-to-day -day typical video game genres, there are some categories that are just flat out obscure and weird. How did we come to this? It is a must for any video game developer to create a sense of uniqueness in their games. With how easy and accessible video games are nowadays, it can be pretty difficult to spark attention if your games look like any other game. Because of this, new categories of video games are produced. If you go to any digital video game marketplace, there are hundreds of tags, each pertaining to a specific video game category. This is fine because it allows video game developers to create new ideas. But it's all fun in games until someone is caught playing hentai chess, that's lame. The Candy Crush one is leagues better. Chess, everyone's favorite game to look smart. I did this on prom night, it gave me so many style points and no one bothered to come hang out with me. It's either you like it or not, any reason for it is valid. Chess by itself is a complex game. Oh thank god, I thought I was talking about something other than difficult video games. Like, imagine if I talked about something that's so out of pocket for me, like beating Cuphead 100%, like, why would I ever do that? Holy shit, it's working. Who said that? There are 6 types of pieces, each having its own unique abilities and a total of 64 squares for you and your opponent. All you have to do is to get your pieces to checkmate the enemy king, if not, you can draw, which can be done in numerous ways, sounds simple enough, right? I want to bring the knight to d2 to guard the knight, but I need to overprotect this pawn on d4 first. So now the pawn and the bishop guard the pawn, which is why I brought the bishop out first, and now I go knight d2, which also guards- To the engine is because you're not really gaining any advantage, as why typically you try to make moves that will make you gain an advantage. You don't need to play the knight orf, you don't need to play the Sveshnikov, the stuff that the top level guys are playing, because you can't handle it. Wait for knight b2, bd2, because here- I'll stick to Monopoly. Chess can be pretty intimidating to newcomers, even facing a low-level opponent is enough. Which is why, as the years pass, many people around the world have sought ways to make chess easier. How? By adding Mario to the game. Yoshi has seen some shit. Chess video games, how are they a thing? Do I have to elaborate? Chess video games have been a thing since the dawn of time, i.e. the 80s. The first ever chess video game ever recorded was Video Chess for the Atari 2600 in 1979. The game is played from an overhead perspective, much like how most chess games are played virtually online. All the pieces are easily visible, you can see the game more clearly, emphasis on clearly. Those aliens are kicking it. Even though the game got flagged for being limited to only one player and having a high retail price of $40, which is equivalent to about $170 today, it still got a lot of praise for preventing illegal moves and including more advanced chess concepts like casting and, and on person capturing, which had not yet become a standard in all chess video games at the time. This became the foundation of every modern chess game, and as chess computer engines are becoming smarter and smarter, so are our wacky human takes on the game itself. Bell Chess is a 2.5D chess game released for the PC, which then later ported to many other systems, including the NES and the 3DO. This looks really great for a game in the late 80s. The animations between each piece while they move around or capture another piece are incredibly detailed. A lot of attention has been put into giving these pieces a bit of character and it's a fun little touch that, surprisingly, not a lot of modern chess games don't have. It's a nice little game, albeit the animations for each piece are 
quite slow. Star Wars Chess! This is what happens when you mash something you love with something you have the least affection towards. It's chess but with Star Wars all over it. It's the same deal with Bell Chess. Unique, albeit slow animations between actions of the pieces. But for this one specifically, the characters who are near the captured piece disappear and it is slow. And this happens a lot. The characters take so long to come back that I can finish a bigger plate of Panda Express alone. Emphasis on alone. But the graphics on each character are quite detailed and it's much more visually appealing than Battle Chess in my opinion. But then again, the game feels much slower than Battle Chess and this is probably the only complaint I have with this game. Killing R2-D2 with a lightsaber shouldn't be this time consuming. Other than that, it's much more colorful and visually attractive than Battle Chess. And it's Star Wars. It can't get any more simpler than that. Next up, American Colonization. Oops, sorry. Lego Chess. It's chess with Lego. Other than the fact that it's Lego, the most unique thing about this game is that it plays a video clip when capturing a piece. Instead of the usual slow and janky captures in real time, Lego Chess plays a video clip. It has a fun little menu system similar to Mario Party. It has a wide variety of chess boards from Colonialism to Johnny Depp. Out of all the chess games I reviewed so far, this one has the most charm to it in my opinion. The cutscenes can be a bit repetitive at times, but they're honestly really fun to watch. It's not as slow as Star Wars Chess or Battle Chess. Overall, this one is pretty great for its time. But as we progress through the early 2000s, chess slowly made it onto video game production, but most of them are just plain old chess. Chess Titans, Chess Master, just give me something unique. I did say unique. Wii Chess, one of the only Wii games to not have an official North American release. Now when I hear the term Wii, I think of simple yet fun collection of games and with the official Wii series with games like Wii Sports or Wii Fit, I'd expect Wii Chess to have some caliber of quirkiness yet easy to grasp gameplay. I did say unique. Okay, so it's a game named Wii Chess. It has the official Wii logo on it. Why does this look like crap? To be fair, it's chess for the Wii and you'd get exactly what you paid for. But this is Wii Chess. There are no motion controls, no fun minigames, no reference to any Nintendo game, and it doesn't even come with Mii support? What is this? And when you get to the gameplay, it's just chess. This is by far the worst chess game ever made. Not only is it an official Wii title with no resemblance to any other official Wii series games, but it's just plain old chess. And what kind of person plays chess on the Wii when there are hundreds of more entertaining games or more accessible devices? You know what? I'll stick to regular chess for the moment. A year after the release of Wii Chess, we have the official chess website. You can easily play this game by looking it up on the internet and you're ready to go. We have a ton of options here, multiple game modes, some official and others chaotic, online and offline play, and pre-built chess lessons ready to go. Don't get me wrong, this is as basic chess as it can get, but it's not slow, the interface is nice and friendly, and is overall a really good tool for learning chess in general. Of course there are other chess websites that are as easily available online, but this one in particular is the most popular of the bunch. Now let's head back to the weird stuff, Battle vs Chess. Now with the title being similar to Battle Chess from earlier, the developers of that game filed a lawsuit against this game. After the lawsuit, the game was released in North America as Czech vs Mate, but it's still mostly known as Battle vs Chess. Now what does this game have that Battle Chess don't? Well, besides updated graphics, you can move the camera and zoom in and out. Is there a reason why the white pieces are portrayed via angels while the black pieces are portrayed via demons? We might need another lawsuit. Other than that, it's just chess with more enhanced graphics and smoother gameplay. But brace yourselves, because we are about to tackle what might be the long-awaited sequel to chess. That's right, you hear me folks, we are talking about Chess 2, the sequel. They have a new font. So, it may not look like much. In this version of chess, you can pick from 6 unique armies. The classic is the standard chess setup and is the only army where you're allowed to castle. Nemesis replaces the queen with the nemesis piece. 
which cannot capture nor can be captured, and nemesis pawns that make nemesis moves. And the empowered army, while a knight, bishop, or rook is adjacent to another similar piece, they gain the power of its neighbor on top of its regular movement, while the queen may only move as a king. Reaper introduces a piece named Reaper that cannot capture a king nor give checks or checkmate, and there are also pieces named Ghost that cannot be captured nor can capture any piece. The two kings army replaces the king and queen with two warrior kings that can capture pieces without moving the king, and the animals are Army, where the knights are replaced by wild horses, bishops with tigers, rooks with elephants, and the queen with the jungle queen. A new win condition has been added where a player wins if their king travels past the fourth rank. Additionally, there is a new dueling system. Each player begins with three stones. They can start a duel where they bid up to two stones. If the defender spends more stones than the opponent, both the attacking and defending pieces are captured, and more stones can be earned by capturing enemy pawns. Yeah, this is a weird game. Don't get me wrong, I like the new army's concept and the dueling system, but this is just too confusing to me. It's alright, I don't necessarily hate it, it's just not for me. I like the good old standard chess. Now this is more like chess former. It's basically turning chess into a simple puzzle platformer. All of the pieces move normally, but they fold down after moving, and the goal is to capture the enemy king instead of a checkmate. This one is honestly really fun. This isn't. Might and Magic Chess Royale. I mean, you have a board. That's basically as much chess as this game gets. This just... Is this even chess? This looks confusing, more than chess too. But to be honest, this is the most video gamey chess video game there is. But it's straight way too much from being a chess video game. I have no idea what to say about this. I don't like it, but that doesn't mean I like it either. But this didn't apply to really bad chess, I don't know why. Really bad chess is anything other than really bad. It's really good. The main takeaway of this game is its randomness. You can have more than one queen and less than eight pawns and the placement of the pieces can be totally random. This is how you can make chess fun, by making it stupid. Chessaria! It has a story. Yeah, this one's boring. Pawn Baryon. Now this one's interesting. You have a deck of cards from which you pick how to move your main piece. It's a simple yet fun concept and it is executed perfectly and it functions as roguelike which makes it even better. But chess doesn't get any better than being a roguelike. No. Just like in real life, everything gets better when there's a gun involved. Shotgun King, the final checkmate. It's simple, you move with a king piece and you have a shotgun. Each piece has a certain amount of health and the goal is to kill the enemy king. Moving around adjusts your rounds and even replenishes some of your ammo. Like Ponbarian, it's a roguelike and you can get upgrades the more you progress. This is the most fun I have in chess. Just bring a shotgun to a chess tournament and you'll always win. Finally, we have FPS Chess, arguably the best one yet. It starts off as any chess game, you move the pieces, etc. But when two pieces are on a standoff, all hell breaks loose. Depending on the piece you have, you can get a variety of weapons, from swords to a gatling gun. If a player loses the standoff, they lose their piece. Alright, I think I know how to win the next chess tournament. Yeah? Yeah, I'm gonna need the 50 cal this time.